Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, welcome back uh, to Wesley in our virtual space. Uh, it's good to, to um, be with you even virtually or to at least be able to communicate you, uh, com communicate with you. Um, as you can see, things are going really well for me. I'm in dire need of a haircut, but we are developing a summer surfer style, maybe man bun sort of deal. Uh, who really knows? But um, if I don't get a haircut, maybe come fall, I'll just really take on a Jesus persona, but uh, I'm sure that you're uh, dealing with your own quarantine issues <laughs> as well. Anyway, we had some announcements that we wanted to make to you, uh, make, make you aware of today, as well as um, just kind of uh, give you some uh, well wishes as, as we begin this summer of uh, uncertainty and stuff. But I just wanted to give you a shout out. Um, so we've got some announcements, including everything from student board to uh, some some basic uh, here and there things about Wesley. Uh, and in order to begin with that, I'm going to turn it over to John. All right. Thanks, Wade. Um, I too need a haircut, but it is uh, great to be with you all today for uh, kind of wrapping up the semester. Um, big thing I wanted to talk to you all about was the results from our student board elections that we held uh, yesterday or Monday, depending on whenever you're listening to this. Uh, thanks to everyone who ran in that um, and for your uh, desire and your interest to serve Wesley like this. Um, and thanks to all of you who voted. Uh, we had one of our highest turnouts ever. Um, 41 of you voted. That's 65% of those who were eligible to do so. And we have some results to get to. So first, uh, we will begin with results for the position of secretary. Uh, this is going to come as a great surprise, but uh, Graham won. Uh, congratulations to Graham Joan, who was running uh, uncontested in that race. So Graham will be serving as secretary uh, beginning with the new school year. Uh, our vice president, uh, I'm excited to let you know that Anna Payton, who has uh, served as secretary for the past year, will be uh, moving into the vice president role. And then that brings us to president. So before we let you know the results of president, uh, we've got a short message that our outgoing president, Amelia, wanted to share. So let's have a look at that. Hey everyone, it's Amelia, your 2019-2020 president and current lame duck. My past four years at Wesley has definitely been a wild ride, but none as much as this past semester. Uh, I just wanna take this time to thank each and every one of you for stepping up in these weird times. Y'all have been coordinating Zoom calls, checking in on each other, praying, reading your Bibles, making masks for your communities, uh, making service possible, and so much more. You are the reason that Wesley, that this community, exists uh, during the school year and during this weird time. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you for checking in. And thank you for electing me your president last year. It's been an honor to represent you. I'm gonna miss you like crazy, but rest assured, you are in great hands for next year. God's got a plan for you and for Wesley, and I can't wait to see how that works out. So for now, keep praying boldly, keep hoping, keep questioning, and keep learning. And don't forget, you're valid. Love you all. Thank you. And roll tide. And so we had a couple of great candidates that ran for president, but I am excited to let you know that your president for the 2020 to 2021 school year will be Paul Selden. So let's hear a brief message from Paul. Hello, my fellow Wesleyans. I'm happy to announce to you this evening that I have been elected to serve as your president for the upcoming school year. I am honored by your decision and look forward to helping lead Wesley. Again, I want to thank everyone who ran in this race. Um, thanks to all of you who voted. Um, I'm really excited to get to uh, work with uh, this new student board in the new year, um, whatever that may look like as we uh, head into um, just continued uh, pandemic stuff. But be sure to congratulate them and uh, Graham, Anna, and Paul will be in touch soon with more details about uh, getting you transitioned into office. Now, back to Wade. 
congratulations to everybody that is going to be serving on our student board for next year. Really excited to work alongside you. Excited to work uh, alongside all of you. Uh, as a matter of fact, we think about uh, what next year is going to look like. <laughs> and to be honest, I'd love to tell you what next year is going to look like, but none of us really know. Um, and that's kind of the, the weirdness of this time, isn't it? Um, what we, we hope uh, for some normalcy come fall. We hope for some normalcy um, at all um, in, in society um, and also at the university and at Wesleyan, but we don't know. Um, and I know that we are all dealing with this differently. And I wanted to acknowledge that a little bit at the end of our time together uh, this, this year. This year is not what any of us wanted it to be um, at the end. Um, I feel like we've done a, a pretty good job um, of maintaining connection and staying together, but nothing can replace being physically together, right? I know that you feel that as well. And the longer that this goes on, the, the longer um, that this sort of angst is going to continue in us. And I just wanted to acknowledge that. I want to acknowledge that for myself as well as for you, because I know that a lot of you are, are kind of struggling right now. Um, I take a few things um, to heart in this time. We, we've kind of used this as our banner verse from the very beginning of this quarantine. It comes from Hebrews. And the Bible says, do not neglect continuing to meet together. Um, and the impetus for that is this need for encouragement. Um, I hope that our Zoom calls and Zoom meetings, especially with our interns and some of our small group leaders, have been encouraging to you. Um, we typically do not have a lot of summer events in the past, except for, you know, people that are taking summer classes. I would actually encourage you to continue meeting in a lot of ways this summer. Now, that doesn't have to be led by me or John or even former interns or, or anything like that. Instead, take it, take it upon your own self, uh, your own shoulders to um, create some meetings. Technology is a wonderful blessing during this time. It is no substitute for physically being together, but it is absolutely a supplement and a substitute for just being alone. So I would encourage you to do that. The second thing that I really kind of want to leave you with is something that I feel like God has been bringing to my heart over the last really few days, but especially just this morning, um, God just kind of poured this out on me as I was listening and reading and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it comes from James chapter five. So I'm just gonna read some scripture to you. Um, James five, starting in verse seven, says, be patient therefore until the coming of the Lord. And that is that verse is a great one for a lot of reasons, but it really hits uh, right now. Be patient until the coming of the Lord. Now for us, the coming of the Lord might be uh, the return of normalcy, or the return of um, hairstylists, or whatever the case might be that you're waiting on. The coming of the Lord may very well be the, the experience of Jesus again. Um, if you're anything like me, my faith has been uh, difficult um, to maintain. I have three really up days and then one really down day. That's kind of my cycle right now of like, I can do this. I'm made for this. It's great. And then I will come into this crippling, sobering realization where I'll like call people on the phone and be like, hey, am I crazy? Is this really happening? And I bet you're the same way. So that be patient until the coming of the Lord. And then James goes on, he says, the farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and late rains. I love that because we are in a season of harvest and farming. The farmer goes out, and I don't know anything about farming, but apparently James does. Um, and James says the farmer goes out and plants, and he just waits for the rain. And sometimes the rain comes early, sometimes the rain comes late, and sometimes there's little droplets between as well. There is a cycle to farming, and you do not go out and check the seeds every day to see if there's, a, <laughs> if there's an apple tree or <laughs> whatever. You just don't. Instead, you wait patiently and you get, get to work um, doing what needs to be done. And James says, you must also, like the farmer, be patient. So strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. Um, 
this word patience comes from a Greek word, uh, macrothumia. Um, macrothumia is this, it, to be patient isn't exactly the, the, the way that we would say, like our parents are like, you know, be patient with your brother or be patient with this, or you just need to learn patience. It's not exactly the same heart. Instead, macrothumia is kind of like, I've heard it defined as being patient according to someone else's timeline or someone else's timetable. I really love that because sometimes for me being patient is about still about my timetable and it's like I want to be out now or I want to be there yesterday or I want to but instead it's simply saying I'm waiting on God's timetable. I'm waiting on this thing that's out of my control and that is such a a more I, I think believer faith filled response during this time. So it says, um, so don't grumble against each other <laughs> so that you may not be judged. Love that. We have to be patient with the times, but we also have to be patient with others. And that's huge. Um, I'm getting less and less patient with others, um, a, a, as I bet you can uh, attest um, in your own lives. It says, as an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. And you remember the prophets, the prophets, many of whom wrote before the exile, during the exile, and even after the exile in the Old Testament. And they were all waiting for deliverance. They were all waiting for a king to come, the Messiah, who would be the king of kings um, in many ways, to restore the kingdom of Israel. Even though they, they didn't fully understand what that would one day mean, their level of patience is massive. Um, and, and so James says, be patient like them, according to God's timetable. Indeed, we call blessed those who showed endurance. And then it says, you've heard the endurance, the patience of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. So again, James is saying, yeah, be like a farmer and be like the prophets. Be like Job, who waited. <laughs> and it's weird to think, of ourselves is anything like Job, but some of us feel that kind of isolation and loneliness right now. Um, James goes on, and this is where it gets like super practical. And this is what I want to say to you, because typically here, we would ride off into the distance and, you know, close the book on the 2019-2020 school year. This year is a little bit different because we're isolated, and yet we're also connected through these marvels of technology. James says, are any of you suffering? And I can imagine that some of you right now, he says, they should pray. Are any of you cheerful? You should sing songs of praise. And are any of you sick? Well, you should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. What I love about this is that it says, whatever you're feeling, begin to live those things out in the community. And so if you're suffering, pray. And don't just pray by yourself, but pray with others. Get on a Zoom call. Call your old roommate or whatever it is and say, you know what, I, I, could, I could use some support. Can we pray together? Are you cheerful? Don't neglect the power of worship in your life. Um, I, I posted online the other day um, a new EP, a few tracks from um, one of my favorite uh, Christian musicians, Audrey Assad posted uh, she just released four new tracks and they are amazing especially during a time of quarantine and isolation um, but find songs that speak to your soul and allow you to praise and then finally are any of you sick um, and it says you should call upon the elders of the church and have them pray over you and, and that's where I want to say don't get isolated um, are you sick certainly if you develop sickness and symptoms of anything certainly let people know but for the majority of us, there is a soul sickness that could take place over the next few weeks and even months. Guard your heart against that soul sickness and reach out for help. Reach out for help if that is the case. There is no reason, including COVID-19, COVID to do life alone, especially given our connected nature. And so give John and I the, the opportunity to be your pastors still, even in this time. You're isolated. We get that, but you don't have to be alone. And it's the same for us as well. Um, in all of this, my hope is that the seeds that we are sowing, the work that we are, are, are going out into the field like farmers to, to 
till it will reap a harvest one day. Um, I, you can stay tuned for some things that we're going to try to be offering this summer. And John and I are going to talk about more of that stuff next week after uh, we all get through with exam week and all this stuff. But I, I hope that you'll look forward to some things. You know, there, there's a, a few book studies that I'm wanting to do. I know John's got some ideas as well for, for things that um, he, he wants to do. You know, we want to stay connected um, in, in ways that maybe we haven't in years past and if you have ideas things that you want to uh, undertake we want wesley to be a vibrant community where and i want you to hear this from me i may believe more during the quarantine in a theology known as the priesthood of all believers than i ever have you have the authority to be um, ministers in this time. You can minister to each other. You can pray for each other. You do not need to come through the licensed, professional, ordained minister to get to Jesus. We do not believe that. Um, so do the work of the church, do the work of ministers, and do the work of preaching the gospel to one another. Now that's really what I would pray during this time for all of us. Wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, emotionally or even ge geographically, know that you are not alone. Um, I've said it in sermons over the last few weeks, but I simply want to reiterate, it has been a joy to work with you this year. Um, I hate that this is the way that this semester end, uh, ended, but I also know that just because we are apart does not mean that we are divided. Um, we are one in spirit. We are one in the Lord. And I, I think that we will grow closer in this and stronger in ministry than we've ever been before. That's, that's my hope at the very least. Um, we'd love to pray for us. And then, um, you know, all I can say is kind of stay tuned. So why don't we pray together? Jesus, thank you. Would you give us patience? You're the God of all things. You are the good and perfect author. You are the one that is telling this story. So help us to live according to your timetable and not according to ours, and help us to listen to you. Would you guide us? And may that beautiful fruit of the Spirit, patience, begin to emerge in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again, everybody. You have a great summer, and I look forward to being with you soon. Take care.